uh, webinar from Admiral Markets on advanced bearish candlestick patterns. My name is Chris Forsnick. And my name is Denat Kerkes, also known as Tarantula on some forums. Welcome. Yes, we welcome you very much. This is, of course, uh, the continuation of last week's bullish version. And before we start, just a user risk disclaimer, uh, point to the fact that uh, Forex is high risk and uh, it may be uh, wise to talk to an independent financial advisor regarding that. And uh, everything you see in here is just for educational in this webinar uh, and, or video is for educational purposes only. So thank you so much and thank you for your attention on that. So once again, we welcome you. And uh, as always, we, uh, we want to point out that the Admiral Markets is the one organizing this great event or webinar. So uh, do, do us and them a favor by uh, taking a look at uh, their website if, you, uh, if you're not trading on their account. And a look at the great advantages amongst others here. The last one, www.admiralmarkets.com, Forex, Admiral Pro Trading Account for Great Sprints. All right, so today's goal, a guide on how any trader can use bearish candlesticks in the Forex market. All right, so uh, basically just a, a repeat in case that you didn't see last week uh, regarding the candlestick, what, what is it exactly? Uh, well, the candle is a name for this pattern here, it's a type of uh, bar or formation that you can use on your chart. Other, of course, optional line bars and uh, uh, lines themselves and uh, range bars. And these are other options, but Japanese candlesticks, of course, uh, tremendously popular um, with traders. So the this is represents the highest price, the uh, wick at the bottom, the lowest price, and uh, the body itself represents the opening or closing price and if the uh, opening is here for example at the bottom and the closing is here it's a, it's a bullish candle uh, and the opposite would be true if the opening is here and the close is here which would represent a bearish candle uh, the, the high and the low in, in both cases would be the same by the way with this type of candle if it's a bearish candle you would have it for example red or gray or whatever color, and if it would be positive, usually you would see, for example, uh, greenish or maybe bluish. And Toronto, you have white, I think, then, right? Yeah, white and black or uh, grayish. Yeah, yeah. So, just the basics on that. Um, I will dive into all these patterns, and you know, these are very powerful concepts, aren't they, Tarantula, in the market? Yeah, the, those are very, very powerful concepts. So, so we will uh, we will talk today about advanced uh, candlestick patterns. So it's not basically those are not uh, the same as we we usually learned uh, till now because those candlestick patterns show most of higher time frames and we can we can use it to our advantage. So most of those candlestick are advised to be used on one hour, four hour and daily time frames. Of course there are some candlestick patterns, reversal patterns that can be used also on 15 minutes time frame but not below it. Because candlesticks yeah. don't have any power below 15 minutes most of the time. So yes. try to look at basically if we have a good setup on one hour, try to find uh, when you draw FIBO retracement, find to uh, try to find uh, another candlestick in the same direction, but on 15 minutes time frame. So yes. this is how I usually do it. <clears throat> oh, oh, but I, oh, if I trade five minutes, I don't use candlestick. I don't use candlesticks. I use MACD retracement, but not candlesticks. So it's another topic now. Yeah, definitely. The time we will frame. concentrate on, on candlesticks today. Yeah. Absolutely. The time element definitely uh, important to realize that uh, the higher the time frame, the more information that it gives to us traders because it's basically uh, showing us vital information who controls or who has controlled uh, the buyers or sellers in that time frame. Of course, the bigger the time frame, the more information, the more powerful that 
usually this information conveys to us. So that's the exactly. point there. Absolutely. Uh, so always interesting to see who wins this tug of war, and sometimes no one because it's sometimes a doji, right? So, but uh, int very important information you can re um, get from this webinar. We'll be going through these patterns. Some of these patterns you might uh, see very often in the forex. Some of them not so much, and maybe a bit more in, in, in the stock market. But we'll go through them all of them. Um, so this is the first one: three uh, black crows. Uh, this is. It's a bearish reversal pattern. Uh, we need three candles for this formation. All right, so we're in an uptrend, and uh, then we see these three consecutive. Here you see the picture in the right lower corner. You see three consecutive uh, bearish candles to the downside, and uh, basically you see uh, each candle. Oh, sorry about that. Each candle opening within the body of the previous candle as well and then consistently let me make the screen moving to the downside alright so let's show a live example and I'll zoom in a bit here you can see three candles to the downside with uh, three black crows showing this on the euro dollar daily chart uh, back in the last summer uh, where you can see a, a continuation of the downtrend here, uh, but soon enough, the uh, euro dollar goes back into uptrend here. But in any case, continuation of the bearish downside there. Then we have three inside down. Also here we have three uh, candles, uh, just like the previous one. Again, we're in uptrend. This is a bearish reversal. Uh, these are all bearish candles. Once again, if you want to see the bullish candle video there is a uh, there is a video on that from last week so take a look at the recording on that all right so three inside down three candles once again uptrend and then we see basically a, a last kind of impulse candle which is pretty strong but then we have an inside candle and then no momentum to the outside upside and we have another down uh, candle all right the third one as well with a lower just, close than the second one. I, I just want to add, guys, uh, these candlesticks are not meant to be perfect. So what what you uh, watch, uh, what you're watching in these examples are basically perfect examples of those candlesticks. But we all, always have two or three variants. Uh, more or less is the same. But you will see in our other examples some variants of uh, of the perfect candlestick patterns. So just concentrate on it, or if you want to try to uh, Google candle star indicator, it will help you in finding those patterns. So just concentrate, it, it is m most of these patterns that we are talking about, so try to concentrate on these perfect patterns and some variants of it. They, should, they shouldn't be perfect. The more perfect they are, is the better, but you know, they don't have to be perfect. Absolutely. We have to uh, be, be flexible as well when uh, looking at the market. And uh, that's, that's the same for candlesticks, absolutely. Here you can see an example where we have an up candle, sorry about that, where we have an up candle right here. And uh, then we have a kind of an inside candle. And then the next one, the close is lower than the previous close. And we see a downside here. All right, so that's three inside down. Then we have three outside down as well, which is uh, a bit similar, but also three candles. The difference only being that with three inside down, this candle was bigger than the next one, and the bearish candle was within. So once again, we have a big bullish candle, and then we have a small, a smaller inside uh, bearish candle and then the next one closes below it. So the only difference is basically that the bullish candle is now smaller than the bearish candle. The bearish candle uh, is, is engulfing in a way that upside candle. Right? So that's the difference with three inside down. Let's take a look. Here's a, a great example. At the top, you, this is Euro dollar daily. And you can see classical example here 
with the close lower than this close. All right, so this is the three outside down. Very good example right at the top before the euro started to make a huge fall back in 2011. All right, this was a very choppy area here. This was the real first signal of that huge downside. So guys, when you trade those patterns near the resistance zones uh, on daily time frame, that should be a no-brainer trade. So you don't need any additional indicators. You can just spot these, these patterns near the big resistance areas and then you can short it on site if you spot a reversal candle. So they are really powerful on daily and four hour time frame. Exactly. This is definitely signaling a huge, huge reversal here. Massive downside because it moved uh, 1,500 pips within uh, three, three weeks it looks like. So or maybe a month let's say. So <laughs> definitely worth it. Definitely worth uh, learning these patterns. Um, we have again our abandoned baby but the bearish one. I always find it a funny name, but as I said last time, there are three candles as well here. Uh, again, prevailing uptrend and um, the difference here being that we have a candle here at the top instead of basically the last one, the inside out, inside out right, was like this, a candle like this inside uh, the bullish, big bullish candle. So the difference here basically is that we have a doji uh, hanging on top of it. As you can see, instead of a bearish candle, within the bullish candle, we have a doji above the bullish candle. Okay? So here we can see an example hanging above the big white candle. All right? So let's go to dark cloud. Here we only have two candles. Again, an uptrend and uh, again, a white big bullish uh, or a bullish, at least a bullish candle as the first candle. Then again, a black candlestick uh, opening on the second candle with a gap, all right, and closes more than halfway into the body of the first candle, all right? So the second candle fails to close basically below the body of the first candle, as you can see. Uh, in this example here, here's the close and it's within this candle. Okay, so that's the dark cloud. This is the euro dollar uh, day chart again. And you see here, let's zoom in, close within this bullish candle. All right, so that's the dark cloud. And then you can see actually our previous example with that massive downside is here and I was talking about a huge consolidation well that's this mess basically you can see it very nicely here uh, it was a lot of choppiness in in that period and uh, the dark cloud indicating a bit of a downside here but then we got one more push up and this one was the real bang to the downside the evening doji star once again here uh, three candles all right, again an uptrend, and again we have a white candlestick as the first candle. Uh, then we see a doji on the second candle uh, that gaps again in the direction of the uptrend, and then a black candlestick, step number four here, a black candlestick is observed on the third candle. All right, so here again, great example of the euro dollar, same period. So perfect examples of turning spots here at the tops actually in all three cases and here too actually this one is similar to this one here as you can see so here this is the evening star once I just go back again one second this was the evening star here so right in here we got that bullish candle doji and then down the currency went all right, um, let's see, we have a few questions in the meantime. We will indeed have a webinar about using these candlestick patterns, right, Tarantula? Yeah, yeah, 
<coughs> we will have a webinar about using the candlesticks on practical examples, how to use it, when to use it, how to trade uh, naked. So you need, you first learn how to use Fibo, then you learn how to use uh, MACD, and now you're learning about candlesticks. We will all wrap it up in trading naked, uh, trading or trading naked with, with <coughs> MACD, so <coughs> that will be one of our next webinars also. Exactly, exactly. And uh, already, let's. Where do you guys see that as a down move in the previous two attacks? Of side didn't really follow through. Uh, let's see. Where do you guys see that as a down move in the previous two attacks? Upside didn't really follow through. I'm not sure if I'm following the question, Jay. Could you repeat that, maybe? Or which part are you talking about? All right. Um, the evening star. Uh, again, well, like so many, three uh, candles and an uptrend. We want to see an uptrend here. We want to see a white candlestick as the first candle. And then we want to see a short candlestick instead on the second candle. That gaps in the direction of the uptrend. So the difference here is that um, it's not a doji. It's, it is hanging above the bullish candle, but it's a it's small bullish candle continuation, so basically one bigger candle and then a smaller one instead of the doji here. All right, so that's that's the difference. If you're wondering uh, that this one looks a bit similar, that's the difference there. Um, and then of course a black candlestick as the third one. All right, so here you, here you see the example again, euro dollar now a bit further, no, this is February 2012. It's a perfect right. example of evening star pattern. Uh, when it showed up, there was some retracement. Retracement, it made a double top, triple top, and then it fell down hard. Very, very big downfall. It was 500 pips drop. Yeah. Just pay attention just, uh, to guys. This is this is these are all higher time frames. So, if there is only two candles on on these uh, examples, it means there is a fifth, uh, at least uh, fifty to hundred pips of a drop. So it's it's really a, a big drop concerning da daily trading. Yes, and this was just the beginning actually, because uh, later on this drops uh, all the way to one twenty not that far from here. I think it drops from here actually. It did this motion and then it, it, I think it dropped already from here just a few few days after here. So that was a huge huge fall. Uh, I mean not only this fall but eventually even even further down. Uh, so Jay reformulated his question. So same chart we have now and we're looking at the 145 he says. Um, but that must be the other chart. Let's take a look. This one maybe. And, and let's see, the previous attack of that resistance line didn't, uh, didn't really make much of a down move and proceeded back up. Uh, well, maybe doesn't look like much, but still don't underestimate the fact that this is a day chart. So, you know, this is 140 here and uh, the close here is at around 143.50 probably, so it's still 350 pips. So, and this is probably a lot more, of course. This is like 138 and 144. This is 600 pips. So, what might not seem much, maybe, is is more maybe than you think in that regard. Let's see. In between those T, the white doji. In between the not sure which white doji you mean. You mean we got dojis here, maybe? That's what you mean? Yeah, you, guys, you always need to take into account a Sunday candle because most of MT4 platforms use Sunday candles. So yes. sometimes it can appear additional candle on Sunday opening. Yeah, exactly. So always pay attention that it doesn't have to be perfect. Yes, exactly. Jay is talking about this candle, by the way, uh, and indeed there's there's a definitely a wick there. We did get a down day after that, but then we had this three-line uh, formation as well. 
Well, okay, it? it's not a yeah. big drop, but eventually it it was enough for a next big drop after it. So basically, it was a signal. If you trade intraday, you could have made 50 pips at least. So, you know, on intraday trading, if you use daily candlesticks near a support resistance, that can be very powerful. If you if you hold on for maybe a, only a single day in a trade, if you stick to a single day, so you can make good intraday trade uh, on trading on daily time frame. <coughs> So you, you shouldn't always try to capture, I don't know, move, whole move, 100 or 200 pips. Try to trade intraday with daily charts. It can be profitable. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you can read a lot of information uh, just looking at the day chart. I mean, <coughs> just looking at candles by candles, and you, you see so much this combination here, uh, maybe here, uh, so many signals you get. Uh, time in, time out. You know that you can do a lot of that uh, with just looking at date charts, basically. Absolutely, a lot of information. Just looking at uh, this chart alone, so it can give a lot of direction to uh, to your intraday trading as well. When you have a heads up, what the, the date chart direction uh, or clues it is given to you. So this is the bearish. Kicking um, number two candles, not something that I have observed regularly personally, but uh, again an uptrend. Uh, the first one is a white uh, Mario uh, Bozu or a white candlestick. All right, then we see the opposite as the second one, and the second candle opens lower with a body gap. All right, so that's quite a uh, dramatic change here, as you can see. We uh, open here and close here, and then uh, we gap all the way down, open here and close here. That's uh, in forex that would usually, I guess, happen in the, over the weekend because, as you know, the uh, intraday trading doesn't stop, of course, uh, within the working or the trading week. So that would be more something for the weekend. Or for stocks, I think this is a stock example, maybe. Yeah, stock example because in forex it's really hard to find uh, Sunday opening with bearish kicking, but we should yeah. be aware of it if if it happens. Yeah, on stock market it's more common because of gaps. On on in forex uh, those are only happen on on a Sunday opening when yes, inter exactly. bank market gaps. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and there's. On the right corner there with the purple um, lines around it or the box, we have a perfect example with a bullish day, a gap, and then uh, a bearish candle. Oh, sorry about that. Alrighty. Upside two crows. Okay, this is uh, three candlesticks. Um, once again, we have our typical uptrend with a typical white candlestick bullish. All right. Now, the difference here, maybe you already see it, compared to the other uh, examples was, first of all, we had examples where we had inside candle and then downside continuation. Then we had a, some examples where we had a candle above the bullish candle, but the third candle was then lower. And in this example, we, uh, we have, we, we keep the bullish candle, we keep the candle above the bullish candle, but the third candle now is actually uh, above that bullish candle as well. All right, so that's the, the difference there. Um, but again, here there's a gap that gaps up, but it's bearish. And then the last one uh, opens at or above the open, but then closes uh, below the close of the previous candle. As you can see here, we gapped up, right? Wait, sorry, we gapped up, but then closed lower than the previous candle. All right? So this was, of course, the close here, and that was the open, so that's the gap once again. And then the same day closed lower and then, of course, the, pre the previous day and the current day, of course. Let me show you that in red. That's the close 
Okay. So that's the upside to crowds. Let's go to an example. And uh, you see one here on the left. When we broke this trend line on the euro dollar daily, we made a, a last move down. Uh, and this was you know, a very uh, this was a very cool uh, reversal pattern. I remember this very uh, very specifically still um, because we it was just a very very cool setup. We had a huge downtrend already, which was going on basically since since that 2011 September, right? So that was a long time already. This is June 2012. And uh, we had a an upside correction, but we broke that trend line. We made some small downside, huge, huge upside uh, correction, uh, but that was just a correction for for more downside. And this was really a perfect example of that downside. Uh, and after that, after we finished this downside, we had a huge, huge reversal right for the uh, upside euro dollar. So this was the last move down, but very interesting setup here. How you can read. Uh, that momentum that, or you can use the candlesticks to read that the momentum of that downside is, is back in play. Okay? Great example. Bearish doji patterns. So basically our classical doji cross, right? So uh, this one you'll see quite often in the Forex. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an indecision candle. Um, we have a cross of doji candles appearing at the tops. Uh, it could be then a, a sign of a reversal, but uh, you know you want to be careful where you see that. As always, uh, if you see it on the on the day chart, that's quite significant. For example, it also depends on the position. For example, here you have a bearish long legged doji pattern on the left. All right, so uh, here you can see definitely candles building up, building up, and then a, a, and this indecision candle, which is more a, uh, a resistance. This is maybe more for the for, for the stock market, but and here you can see uh, a very bullish candle, but a doji within that um, bullish candle. That's a harami cross pattern, and then the dragonfly is where there's a lot of uh, bullish momentum still pushing the price to have the same close as the open. All right, so just the classical dojis, as most of you are aware of. Let's take a look at some examples here. Uh, Euro dollar four hour chart um, of last year, end of last year. And uh, you can see here some a doji or two, just like this one. And here, and here. So, you know, not in all cases it's um, necessarily uh, means that we have a continuation or, or a reversal. Um, here we have more of a wick on the bottom, and actually we see continuation to the upside. Here we have a very small candle, maybe that's a Sunday candle, could be, it's so small. It, uh, we do get a reversal, but just a bit later after this engulfing, bearish engulfing candle right there. Any other dojis? Let's see, maybe here a small one. Alrighty, but I think the shape and the pattern, of course, is well known. Oh, here's one more. All right, just a, a candlestick, of course, that basically the buyers and sellers, there's no clear outcome of the winner, and uh, the open and close are just very close to each other. And there's, so there was a lot of fighting and a big tug of war within that time frame, in this case, four-hour uh, charts, right? But uh, at the end of the day, within all those four hours, the currency made an up move and down move, but there was no clear winner. Alrighty, meeting uh, lines, three candles again, and uh, once again we have our white candlestick as observed, and then we see a black candlestick uh, as the second one, and uh, the closing prices are the same or almost the same on both candles. It's, that's quite funny, but basically what it boils down to is that you have, on this candle you have your open here, right, and on the second one here, and their closes, which are marked with red, are both here, 
and here. So you can see they have the same price. So that's that's called a meeting alliance. Okay, so let's take a look. Pound dollar. Wow, that's an interesting example. December 2012. Hmm. That was, of course, ah, that was, wow, that was way, I didn't know that. That was uh, way at the beginning of the massive downtrend on the pound dollar, as you see. Interesting. We had double top here, and we moved all the way down to 148. Massive downside. 1,500 pips. And the first sign of that was the meeting lines. So you can imagine what kind of profit pit potential there was if you would have spotted that, uh, that reversal pattern um, before that huge fall. This is the advanced block. So here we have three candlesticks. Again, we have an uptrend. A white candlestick appears as first. Then we have the next two candles. You can see here clearly uh, white candlesticks again, Polish candlesticks again, <clears throat> with, with each close above the previous candle close. All right? So you see here this second candle close higher than the first candle close, the third one higher than the second one. So that's the advanced block. And the last two candles have long higher shadows. All right, so I'll make, mark it in a different color. All right, so that's the advanced block. It doesn't have to be as as Tarantula says, you have to uh, you know be flexible in, in spotting them as well, but Here's a great example where we have the second candle high and the third candle high higher, and uh, we have a bit more wick on the second and third candle. Great example of the advanced block there. And then after that, sorry, I should point out after that, this correction first. Alrighty, so the two crows, the three candlesticks, uh, and then the difference here being that, uh, well, basically we have again our Polish candle uptrend. Uh, the second candle is a short black candlestick that gaps up, as we've seen before. And then the, the last step, the third candle, another black bearish candlestick appears that opens at or above the open and then closes below the previous uh, candle, but still above the close of the first candle. All right, so uh, that's a bit. Uh, let's go through that. Uh, basically, we have the third. Let's take a look at that third candle. It's the most important. So we have another black, a bearish candlestick that appears that opens at or above the open. So here we're we're just uh, at or above it, but then close below the previous uh, close of the previous candle but still above the close of the first candle. All right, so two crows. Although, am I seeing something wrong here? Above the close of the first candle, this, this looks higher, to be honest, or not. I don't know if Tarantula is there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here, but that is a variant. We can here. I, I told you we shouldn't always have perfect candles. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, the perfect example should be the close below the close of the previous candle. But still, this is a great example of two crows. We can we can see it on on next slide. Okay, I was just confused because I was <laughs> reading it out loud. Yeah, and like, this is yeah. this is a, okay. These are yeah. two crows. You yeah, see? exactly. Uh, you see that third candle where it closed. It was just a perfect close with a wick. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it was, this is a two crows, perfect example of two crows because we have a wick on the third candle. We don't have just a big body. It's a wick. And then after that, it was a correction to the downside. Yes. So always look at those patterns at the tops. Uh, this is a double, double resistance. It's a double top. So basically after this uh, double top, it went down. So you have resistance, you have two crowds. After the close of the third candle, we go down. We can short it. 
it's a small risk comparing to rewards. So basically, again, uh, on these patterns, uh, try always to spot it on daily and four-hour time frame. They're most reliable on those time frames. And before we proceed to the next set of slides, I would li like to ask the audience if there is some questions that should be answered. Either any misunderstandings or you don't understand perfectly what is going on, we can, we can, uh, now we can, so we can show you everything uh, on the chart. If there are no questions, we can go further. Yeah, nothing so far. So, so it's, everything is clear, right? If there's okay, great. Yeah, looks so. If there's a question, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Next uh, set of slides, we are uh, going into a deeper bearish candlestick mode, a bearish breakaway. Again, these patterns are spotted at the very top of, of the move and it's always best to spot it near the big resistance. Uh, the first candle is white candlestick and it really represents the current uptrend. The second candle is white but the body gaps in the direction of the trend. The third and fourth candles continue the trend direction but a fifth candle is the most important one because it's a black candle that closes inside the gap that is formed between the first two candles. So basically, uh, this fifth candle closes the gap be uh, between first and second candlestick, but it also eats all previous lows. And uh, mostly there is usually uh, those are spotted on Sunday opening because of the gap. Uh, if you if you notice, there are many many patterns that use gaps to confirm it. Uh, if we spot a gap, we can only spot it on Sunday opening. Remember that uh, those are not to be spotted on irregular intraday market, only on Sunday opening because of interbank and retailer difference. The interbank market uh, works every day, while retail market doesn't work on uh, weekends. So always try to spot on Sunday opening. Uh, we can we can see that on next slide, Chris uh, bearish breakaway. This was bearish breakaway. Basically, again, uh, this is four-hour time frame. But uh, strangely enough, there there was a gap on cable. So basically, this uh, fifth candlestick. Look how it closed the gap between the third and fourth candle. Uh, as I say, those are no, not meant to be perfect, but the, the, the logic is the same. If you spot a gap, you look for a gapping, gapping candlestick pattern. This was bearish breakaway variant too, so basically the gap was not uh, from the first candle to the second, it was from the third uh, uh, and, the four, and the fourth candle. But the fifth candle closed the gap, and if you see, it basically ate this empty space between. So it's bearish breakaway, second variant of it, uh, and uh, of course after that it was a very, again, it was a big top, uh, 63.20 on cable, and then it dropped down for, for more than 400 pips. Uh, between those pattern and the, and the bottom there was a really bearish, uh, all bearish Marubozu candlesticks right to the bottom. So if you follow Marubozu pattern, it, it, this, this setup was really a no-brainer trade and for a long time, uh, long-term traders, this was more than enough to finish this month with a profit. When I trade, I rarely do uh, trading over the weekends or uh, overnight, but uh, for longer-term traders or mid-term traders, intra-week traders, how I call them, it was a it was a, a perfect setup. So always again always try to concentrate on resistance levels when trading those patterns, and always try to watch it after the candlestick pattern has been done. Then you can wait for a small retracement and go short. Next slide is deliberation candlestick. We have five candlestick in configuration. 
Again, we have an uptrend because we are talking about reversal candlesticks. So first we need to have an uptrend. Those are not continuation candlestick patterns. Those are reversals. So uptrend always. Second big thing is why the candlestick appears as the first candle, some sort of marbozo or momentum candle. Next candle is another white candlestick which opens within the range of the previous candle's body and closes above the previous candle's close. So basically this candle has a higher high. And the final candle is a short white candlestick, a spinning top. That's indecision candle or a doji that gaps up above the second candle. So again, the liberation is gapping pattern. We should try to spot it on Sunday opening. Please show us the next slide, please. Okay, this this was a sort of deliberation. If there is not a gap, but if 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 we if you use, for example, another broker, there should be a gap. Probably there should be a gap uh, because of the difference of interbank and retail market opening. Again, but this was the perfect example of deliberation. Just imagine that third candle was a that. If, if that gap gap up above the second candlestick, so basically it will it would be a perfect deliberation example. Uh, this can be a deliberation variant too without a gap, but again, if if maybe if I used another broker, there would be a gap. But on this candle opening, there wasn't a gap, and it's called deliberation variant too. But the, the logic is the same. First candle, second candle, high, high, third is a spinning top. There is no gap, but there can be a gap. And again, there is big rejection after the double top. So on this slide, we notice that we have a double top. After the double top, we have the liberation candlestick pattern. So always try to watch again, big, big resistance or whether the patterns uh, are close to double or triple tops. So don't underestimate the power of horizontal levels of support and resistance. In this example, of course, it's a resistance. It's a perfect triple top. But if there had been a gap at a third candle, the spinning top, a dodgy candle, we should have had a perfect example of, of this pattern. So this is deliberation, again, variant two, without a gap, but again, is the same because on forex market gaps are not so often to be seen. Okay, next slide. And uh, by the way, we'll have a uh, webinar on resistance and support, I think, soon. Of, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure when exactly, but it will be soon. I think next set of webinars uh, during the next few weeks we, we will see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bearish engulfer, bearish engulfing candlestick. This is very common in forex market. Uh, the market is again characterized by a prevailing uptrend. Then uh, a white body is formed. Uh, by a white body is formed and observed as the first candle, and uh, the the next candlestick is basically the trigger. The black body that is formed on the second candle completely engulfs the white body of the preceding candle. So the third candle, uh, the second candle eats the body of the first candle. It basically eats it. Okay, there there are some weeks, but if you see the body. The second candle's body completely ate the first candle's body. So this is a bearish engulfing pattern. There are some weeks in between, but the body is important here because the body of the first candle is contained into the body of the second candle, or if it's easier for you, the second candle's body completely ate the first candle's body. So after that, again, we have a double top. If you see that, we have a double top. And if you if you watch this webinar carefully, if you were, if you've been watching this webinar this webinar carefully, you should have noticed that these candlesticks usually form after the triple or double tops. So again, uptrend the first candle and the second candle a the first candle, then it dropped down. It was a huge drop on four-hour time frame. You shouldn't always try to capture the whole move. If you intraday trade, get try to get between 20 and 50 pips. If you hold a trade interweek, try to get more than 50 pips per trade, uh, presumably from 50 anywhere to 200 pips. So again, four hour time frame and bearish engulfer. Very, very good example because we 
or usually have engulfing candlesticks, both bullish and bearish, uh, near the support and resistance zones on higher time frames, especially on 4 hour and daily. Uh, okay, next slide is ah oh, well bearish belt hold again. Those the, those kind of belt hold met hold patterns are characterized in uh, more often in a stock market. So uh, one Kellen configuration market has a prevailing uptrend. It's uptrending. Market gaps up again. We should have a gap here. Try to watch a Sunday opening if there is a gap and opens at its high. After that, it closes near to the low of the candle. Uh, the third the most important factor is a long black body that has no upper shadow. It's called black open in Marubozo. It's observed. Of course, it's observed near the top or the big resistance. On next slide, we should see that. This is a bearish bell, bell hole on uh, Aussie CAD for our time frame. You see there is a bearish bell hole. There's still, there is no gap, but again, again, only on Sunday opening there should be a gap. If there is no gap on four hour time frame, treat it as bearish bell hold variant too. Always try to uh, treat these patterns as second variants if there is no gap. If there is a gap, uh, try to, to treat it as the perfect example of candlestick pattern near the tops. So bearish bell hold pattern near the, the basically this was a, well, it can be called double top but it was the perfect example of, of bearish belt hold variant too, of course, because there is no gap. Again, uh, advanced bearish block, then it, it uh, went to the upside. Okay, we can move on to the next slide, the hanging man. This is very common in Forex market. Uh, one pattern, one candlestick pattern, a small real body at the upper end of the trading range is observed. The color of the body is not important, so remember this. Many times you probably heard that the, the color of the body is important in hanging man pattern, but it's not. It should be treated like, uh, like some sort of a hammer in uptrend. So the body is not important, uh, the pattern should look like this and it has a wick and the lower shadow of the candlestick is at least twice as long as the body. And there is almost no upper shadow. If there is a small shadow, we treat it as hanging man variant too. But on perfect example, there should be no shadow at the top. So we can try to move on to our next slide where we can see, ah, uh, this is a hanging man, yeah. You see the wick is, uh, well, twice, at least twice as long as the body. And it was observed near the, the top. It was uh, basically a double top. Or we can treat it as a triple top. Uh, the market was perfectly uptrending on one hour time frame. This, this pattern can be spotted also on, on one hour time frame. It's OK if you spot it on, on one hour time frame. It's even reliable on uh, 15 minutes time frame as trigger entry, as a trigger entry. Because this pattern is very, very familiar with forex market. The bigger the time frame is, the more reliable it is, but it can be used in 15 minutes and in one hour. In one hour as a setup candle and on 15 minutes time frame as a trigger candle. So after this, you see there was a, some sort of a retracement to the upside, but then yet again it was a big, big uh, momentum candle to the downside and it proceeded to go lower but the hanging man, man was a trigger for this downside move. Uh, yeah, the buyers were perfectly exhausted at the top. You see the buyers, there are no buyers, they were exhausted. And then the sellers kicked in and it was tanked to the very bottom. It was 300 pip drop, almost 300. Well, it was at least 200. I think it was 200 and something pip drop. On one hour time frame, don't don't uh, don't focus on that every time. Watch the time frame, and you manage your risk according to your time frame you are trading at. So, if you trade on one hour time frame, don't try to squeeze all the move. On one hour time frame, even 30 pips is great thing. Remember that. Okay. Next candle, Chris, shooting star, very familiar again with the forex market. 
and Forex market has a lot of uh, has had a lot of shooting stars during its uh, lifespan. It's one of most common patterns. The, you probably know the market is characterized by a prevailing uptrend, and the first candle of the pattern is a white candlestick. Prior to shooting star, there is a white candlestick. On the second candle, a small body at the lower end of the trading range is observed. Color of this body is not important. Again, it's not important color. The upper shadow of this second candlestick should be at least twice as long as the body. There is almost no lower shadow. If you spot a candlestick that is that has a that has a weak uh, uh, as long as the body, it's okay. It's a variant too. If the if the wick is twice as long as the body, it's perfect. And if it's not twice as long, that's it, then it's a variant too. We we can trade it. So we can see um, in our next example, this is a shooting star. We have a small wick to the downside. It's tolerable. It's tolerable uh, because there. As always, market is not perfect. So, uh, Chris, can you can you show our traders uh, this uh, perfect candlestick to the left? To the left, you see, to the left, left, the down, down, down. Now to the right, uh, there, there. That is a perfect candlestick. Perfect candlestick uh, sh shooting star. I have shown this uh, upper example because it was close to the resistance. But if you trade intraday, this is one hour time frame. On one hour time frame, this was also resistance zone, because we 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 have a, a triple top. So this is a resistance zone on one hour time frame. That is an intraday trading, and from intraday perspective, this uh, shooting star is perfect, and we could have traded it. Really, this was a nice nice drop for. I know how much it was, maybe for 30 pips, yeah. But it was again on, remember, on one hour time frame. The second, the second <coughs> shooting star is a well variant to a shooting star. It's found a, at the very top of this trading range, range, and then yet again there is another shooting, another two shooting stars that signal the price to go down. If you see uh, two shooting stars in succession, you see that the buyers are almost exhausted, and yet again the market show that that shooting star is powerful, powerful. Tool, of course, the bigger the time frame is, the more reliable it is. But for intraday trading, one hour time frame is enough, really, to catch from 20 to 30 pip move. It's usually found in a correction mode or maybe in reversal mode. As close as to the to the resistance is, the more uh, reversal you will see it. Uh, if we spot it near the mini resistance, such as one hour intraday resistance, that should be a signal for us to either close a long trade or to reverse into a short trade. Okay, next candle. Okay, Harami pattern, the same as bullish, but this one is bearish. Basically, it's some sort of inside candle. We can treat it as inside candle. Uh, and inside candle and harami are very very similar because the first there is a white body and the second candle is completely engulfed into the first candle's body. So hold that inside candle or call that harami. It's the same. We can treat it as the same. Inside candles are really good for intraday trading on one hour time frame. I have witnessed many times, especially on cable in the last two weeks, that inside bars or inside candles are indeed powerful. If you trade, we, I will show you, we will show you how to trade inside bars when we, when we make that uh, webinar about trading support and resistance. Uh, I'll show you how to, to spot a one hour uh, uh, inside bar or harami and trade it on one on five minute time frame. Because uh, it's some sort of ranging candle, and uh, when the range is, once the range range has been broken, the pattern usually follows up into profit trade. So we can see that on the next example. This is the inside candle. Uh, ignore the wicks. Look at the bodies. The bodies are good example, and we always try to look the bodies when you try the inside bars inside candles. 
this candle is uh, is completely engulfed into the first candle's body. So after that, it's called Harami or inside bar, inside candle. After that, we went down. So basically, you will spot a lot, a lot of those inside bars or candles when we are in consolidation mode. Uh, I have noticed over time the smaller the the pattern is, the better it is. For example, we had uh, prior to this uh, uh, Chris to the left, we had another another to the left left. Uh, just no no to the right, to the right here. Oh, to the right. No, 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 not that. <laughs> it's hard to do. Uh, okay, I, I cannot show you now. Uh, uh, to the left of this marked candlestick pattern, just to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventh and eighth candle to the left of this marked candlestick patterns. Look to where the left. I marked ah. it. Uh, to the left, yes, seventh and eighth candle. You see, this was a perfect example here of inside bar. No, 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 that, this. Yeah, these two. Seventh, yeah? One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, seven five, and eight. Six, seven. seven and eight. This is a perfect example of one hour inside bar close to a resistance. You see what happened after the three candles. It went down. It went down for 30 pips. Again, it's intraday pattern. The, the less uh, uh, those harami or inside bars are, the better it is for us to trade because it's a sign of consolidation, and uh, if we consolidate or close to resistance, we should trade it at a five-minute or fifteen-minute break of the range. So uh, I, we will show you in uh, one of our next webinars how to do it. But this was again and yet a, a perfect example of Harami and uh, inside bars on one-hour time frame. For me, if I trade it, I trade it on one hour. That is a uh, setup uh, chart and trigger chart is five, either five minutes or 15 minutes time frame. So we can move on to our next example. Inside bars and harami are one of most common patterns. Bearish continuation patterns. These, are pa these patterns are signaling the continuation of downtrend. So the first we have is basically five candle pattern. It can be between those it can be six candle pattern or four candle pattern because uh, the, the biggest characteristics are the first candle in the pattern is a long black candlestick within a defined downtrend. Then we have a series of ascending small bodied candlestick that trade within the range. Uh, there can be two, three or four candlesticks. But uh, the, 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 the characteristic is that those are all ascending small bodied. Those are ascending small body candlesticks. So we will show you next examples. I think there is a, uh, four candles in between. And the final candle is a long black candlestick which creates a new low. And that suggests uh, the sellers are back in the control of the direction. So uh, we use it as a continuation pattern. It can be used uh, close to support because those two to four candlesticks in between signal the retracement. So if we draw people from the top to bottom of that one big candlestick and there is a retracement near the 38.2 or 61.8, two or three maybe, or four candlesticks, we can treat that as a signal to go short. And after that, after the fifth candle, we can add scale in, scale into our trade. Yes, that's, that's it, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> and we can we can enter short in a Fibo retracement, or we can add or enter short after the fifth candlestick has been uh, has been done. Basically, it breaks the range of the of the of the first candlestick. Uh, I will show you that on our next example. Uh, we can see the slide. Yes, those are okay. The first example is a, well perfect example of continuation pattern. You see. One, two, three. One, two, three, close to the top, and then fifth candlestick broke down, the, almost broke down the range, and yet again it was a signal to go short. It's uh, very common in a downtrend. It's some sort of correctional pattern, and we trade it uh, either on the blindly on FIBO retracement or at the close of the 
fifth candle or maybe a sixth if there is no ascending. So the most important are the, the first and the last candlestick and in between there should be ascending candlesticks like in that kind of example. There is, a, there, is, there is one candlestick which basically didn't form that perfect pattern, but if you uh, try to watch it from higher perspective, you will notice that the first candlestick was indeed very, very uh, bearish. So it needed to have some sort of retracement. And traders try to retrace it a bit to sell it higher, but they couldn't. So after the close of this, maybe, well, this uh, fourth, and six candlestick that was a signal to go short. We could have traded this pattern after the close of that of that first bearish or that the third uh, one to third fourth fourth sorry fourth bearish candlestick. We could have traded like that. There we will experience some sort of retracement. Then again, uh, six candlestick draw draw the pattern uh, literally to the bottom. So yet again uh, we can try to trade this pattern uh, in between there should be uh, three or four anywhere from two to four candlesticks we can trade it just literally like that we don't use any additional indicators when we trade falling tree methods especially um, on one hour time frame rick do you do you understand this this pattern because um rick was asking if we could repeat it uh two minutes ago but does it make sense now, or is to let us know which maybe which part is unclear? Does it make sense that you have basically you have one bearish candle, and then you have three smaller anywhere bullish from candles, two to four. or two okay. to four, anywhere to two or four, and then you have a continuation of that bearishness with another bearish candle. So basically, it's called falling tree methods because usually traders use three in between candles to uh, to spot the pattern. But there can be anywhere from two to four. If there is more than four, we cancel it. There, that's not a setup for falling tree methods. So the three is perfect anywhere from two to four. If we have two or four, it's a call variant two. So basically, try to spot this uh, for the starters try to spot as really as three three ascending candlesticks in between that's uh, that's basically perfect pattern if we have three three exactly three ascending candlesticks so I hope, like I hope this that's first clear. example on yes. this chart yes exactly in neck or on neck again the first candle we see is a long black candle and the second candle is well, it's, uh, it's this example says blue candle, but it's basically a white candle on my charts. Again, it's hard to spot it on forex market uh, because uh, they are not so common. Uh, on neck and in neck patterns are usually found as a retracement, as a retracement entry zones. So basically, if we see it, we try to treat it as trigger, not set up, not set up pattern basically as a trigger pattern on presumably on one hour or 15 minute time frame. Uh, we will see in our next example uh, on practical example uh, how okay this is in neck but you see basically basically it's a it's a pattern that I personally don't trade it this was ex an example of, of failing pattern that it's not to be traded because it took a lot of time to develop and eventually it didn't develop. But if you see this, if you see this pattern, you can try to trade it as a trigger because stops are very small then. Don't try to trade it as set up. I don't, I never trade it as a setup candlestick pattern just because of this. This, if this was a trigger, trigger entry, I would have, I would have maybe suffer a small loss. But if you see this pattern, you can try to trade it to the downside because it's a continuation pattern. But most of the time it's not characterized in Forex market. Again, it's more characteristical in stock market. But yet again, if you spot it, it's up to you. Would you trade it or not? 
So in NEC, on ECR, basically just for demonstrational purposes, I don't trade it almost never. If I trade a continuation, I really prefer that falling three methods. This this is that's the perfect example of of falling three methods, and it's always I always uh, trade it blindly if it's close to a resistance. I don't use MACD or I don't use any anything. Just just resistance and and a falling three methods because it's a retracement in downtrend. Okay. And basically, I trade it on one hour time frame, intraday trade. Okay, next slide is, is basically side by side white lines. We will see that on our example because the first candle is a long black candle. It's important. It's bearish pattern. The second candle is white candle open below the low of the first candle and closing barely into the body of the first candle. We will see on our next example, side by side, on the charts. These are side by side. You see again, yet again, there is that third candle. Well, it was some sort, probably, maybe it was a Sunday candle. But again, we see two candles. This is a variant two. We can treat it as a variant two. But yet again, this is if the pattern is close to support, we don't trade it. This pattern I show you is very close to support, so we shouldn't trade it. There was some if, because this is four hour time frame. We could have had some profit. It was at least well twenty pips of profit, but for for four hour time frame, that's very slight profit. And if you spot this pattern close to support, don't trade it if this support is big. Try to trade it if there was a retracement close to a resistance. So just imagine and this uh, basically this side by side white lines is really hard to find on forex market. Yet again it's more characterizing in stock market but if you spot this pattern close to a big support don't try to trade it. Only try to trade it if there was some sort of retracement to the upside and then it appeared close to a one hour presumably resistance. But uh, I telling you this, this pattern, I, I, I rarely find it in Forex market. So try to concentrate more on those Marubozu and falling three methods uh, continuation patterns, black crows and so on. On uh, next slide we will see bearish three line strike pattern. This uh, this is more common uh, for uh, for forex market than for stock market. First three candles make up the three black crows formation, or similar two candlestick pattern. If there are no three, there are two candlestick patterns. We can treat it as a variant too. And the last candle is a white candle that opens below the third candle and closes above the first candle. Or if that that's variant two it closes just above the second candles open. So try to memorize this. This pattern can be found in Forex market. It's characteristic uh, in Forex market. Two variants with two candlestick and with three candlestick uh, patterns. If there is three candlestick, that's a perfect bearish three line strike. And if there are two black rows, not three black rows, two black rows, we treat it as the variant two and the and yeah, and that, that candle, uh, the white candle, eats previous two candles to the upside. But it's bearish. It's a bearish pattern. Don't try to be confused and to, pl uh, to place a long trade. Again, Chris, we can show it on the next slide. This is it. Usually traders would have thought that this was a reversal pattern because there is a big, big candlestick to the upside. But yet again, we formed uh, basically almost a double top, and then the pattern drove the price down. So this is bearish three-line strike. We can call it bearish two-line strike, because this this candlestick completely this this uh, black candlestick completely ate last two candlesticks and continued to go down. Basically, we can place a trade after this big 
white candlestick. We can, yeah, we can place a trigger there if it's if it's close to a resistance. And this candlestick was really close to resistance, but it's a signal for downtrend. So if we spot it close to resistance as a sort of retracement, we can always try to enter on even blindly if we trade naked on one hour time frame as intraday trade. So this is bearish three line or two line strike, whatever. If there was a third bearish candlestick, we would have treated that as a three line. In this example, it's variant two or bearish two line strike. Okay, next candles are very, very bearish candlesticks, uh, uh, Maruboza candlesticks. And those, those define strong sell of the resistance or strong buying of the support. Those are called momentum candles. If we spot black candle and there is a retracement after, after the first candle, we can draw a Fibonacci tool and even trade this Maruboza candle by itself. We have shown you that on our first webinar about uh, advanced bullish, uh, bullish candlesticks. Now the, the same thing is for bearish candlesticks. If we spot a big bearish, big, big, strong bearish candlestick, we can treat it as one candlestick pattern and draw a FIBO from top to bottom if we are in a downtrend and then enter or on retracement. If, if there is a, if the, if the next candle, yeah, top to bottom and if next next candle stops around 50 or 61 percent then we can enter blindly if we trade naked this is for naked trading exactly Chris so we need black candlesticks and those black candlesticks are always to be found on one hour or four hour time frame depending on time frame we are trading at and we can trade it by itself, but always wait for retracement. Never trade this pattern without a retracement. If we don't have a retracement, there is a strong opportunity that those would be three, two black crows, three black crows, or eventually three line strike pattern. So if there is a retracement, draw a retracement tool and trade those patterns to the downside, of course. You see, there was some small retracement, maybe to 23.6, then it continued to go down. It was not a strong one, but yet again, well, well, you see, basically, those candles can be traded as themselves, uh, like one candlestick patterns by themselves. The first example is almost to the 38.2% retracement. The second is almost to the 50% retracement. The third example is to the 23.6. Basically, when you spot the bigger the candle, the better it is. And if you spot Marubozu candlesticks, always try to, those are really, can be no-brainer trades. If you spot it, wait for retracement and then enter. We will show you on the webinar how to trade naked support and resistance. We will show you how to, how to trade Marubozu. Those can be trading system by itself if you know how to use it. If you are patient enough, Marubozu candlestick trading can be trading system by itself. We will show you. Be be ready to be ready to watch a webinar about it. I know many traders that trade only those candlesticks and pin bars. So wait, be patient and you will see how to trade naked. So Chris, I think if there are some more patterns to the downside, I let's see. I don't think so. I don't think so. We basically, we covered it all today. For me, uh, again, uh, when I'm talking about, about uh, basically, about those continuation, falling three metals, Marubozu, and, and three line strike. On in neck should be ignored if only if there are some gaps in between. So basically, as all patterns are, you always watch reaction close to resistance. Oh, sorry, guys, uh, if we trade continuation patterns, try to go for retracement, always for retracement. You use FIBO for drawing the retracement tool. Or if it's a reversal pattern, 
always try to spot it near the double tops and uptrend. If it's a continuation, we should have downtrend, then we trade it as retracement. We will show you that on in our some of our next webinars how to trade naked. So if there is any questions, don't hesitate to ask us. No questions so far, but let's give our viewers a minute. In the meantime, I'll take a look what the uh, next webinar is. So yet again, reversal patterns bearish are, are spotted close to resistance zones and double tops. Continuation are close to support but into the retracement. Remember that. That is most important. Always wait for a pullback. Except when you do breakout trading, that is another team. But breakout trading is done on one or five or fifteen minutes time frame. You don't do it on one hour time frame. So if you trade one hour, wait for retracement always. Exactly. Um, by the way, next week we will have our webinar as usual again on Thursday, same time. Today was an exception on Wednesday, so just that you're aware of that. And uh, we have one question from um, Godly Paul who says, it's off topic, but is COT with capital Scott important for intraday traders? Well, to be honest, I don't know much about it. For me, for interday trading, I only watch red news such as today. You see what happened. Uh, Euro uh, was really having a good day. I, 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 no, I made it uh, on Forex Factory and uh, worldwide investment forums. I made a setup for trading. It was 29.50 level. Basically, it went up, then it went down for some 20, 30 pips. It dropped for 70 or 80 pips afterward, but we had a great opportunity to trade into a short trade close to 29.85. It was a bearish tweezers. If you follow if you follow a Spider's Dam, you would notice or Admiral Market Blog or Facebook. You, I'm not sure if I posted it on Facebook. I think it was only Admiral Market Blog and uh, uh, Forex Factory Spider's Dam, my thread. Uh, it was bearish tweezers. Basically, this is linked, today's webinar is linked to bearish patterns. It was bearish tweezers close to 29.50 after the rejection of 29.85. So, yet again, it was directly connected to this sell-off. And uh, if, you, if you watch today's movement, I always wait for news to sell up. I really don't like to trade into the news. Because today's move was really stop-grabbing move. Euro went to 3, almost to test. 30 zero, zero levels, so it was a false upward move. So yet again, guys, uh, I'm not sure about COT, but when you, if we have strong news, try to go for a scalp prior to news and try to go for intraday trade after the news. Don't try to jump in when news are, uh, when news is already released because you will, probably you will be spiked up. There are a lot of fake moves when the news date uh, is released. Absolutely. So, Paul, I really don't know about it. Just try to concentrate on, on Forex Factory or uh, Forex Street Calendar for that particular day, if you trade intraday. That should and be more than see. Enough, believe me. By the way, we have uh, next week, I found out here in our schedule, on the 30th of May, on Thursday, we have scalping the Forex market, so that's going to be very interesting. I'm sure you will uh, enjoy that a lot. And then the week after, we have support and resistance, the one we were already talking about. That's June 6th. Exactly. We will show you how to scalp into the market. Then Sashi is asking if these patterns can fail. Yes, yes always. of course. Everything in Forex can fail. There is no sure thing in Forex market. The sure thing is only your profit, your mindset, and your stop loss if you have it. <laughs> uh, everything else is not sure because you know every pattern can fail. But most most of the time, if you spot these patterns on higher time frames near the near the tops or bottoms, depending whether they are bullish or bearish, they should work. But yet again, you need to have a trigger for that. Uh, 
for that pattern. We will show you on, on our next webinar how to zoom into trigger chart after you spot it on a setup chart. Let's see, we have uh, one more question here. Uh, let's see, can you also can you guys provide some insight on price action based level projections? What That's price true. action? Projections? That's, yeah. I don't understand. What, what, what does it mean, price action projections? Mm, I'm not sure. Price action based level projections. I'm also not sure. Maybe Paul could help us there. Price projections. Price projections. Well, when I try to look into uh, resistance or support uh, zones, I usually uh, have my uh, tem template where I manually mark uh, the levels on the charts. And sometimes I use Camarilla or for scalping purposes I use hourly pivot points. So I'm not sure what, uh, what are you talking about price projections. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, uh, Sashi, then your answer regarding if these patterns could be fake is also answered. And there was someone who asked about the fibs. Please repeat the situation when to trade the, the, the retracement. If you spot a big bearish candle, now we are talking about bearish candlesticks. If you spot big bearish candle, as we have shown you on the charts before, uh, that those are candles, for example, on one hour time frame, which are bigger than 30 to 50 pips, even bigger. Big bearish candle, Marubozu candle. Draw the retracement tool and trade it by itself. Try to enter anywhere between 38.2 to 61.8, even 78.6, but most of the time 38.2 to 50 percent fib. So draw the fib on that particular candlestick. A retracement pip, and then you can try to enter when price touches 31.2 or 50 percent of pip. So Marubozu candlesticks are traded like that, or or three three line strike formations continuation patterns. But if you spot Marubozu candlestick, that is a sure thing to trade it by retracement pip. Uh, it requires some patience, but uh, when you spot it, go for it. Because usually risk to reward is good on that particular trade. You place, place stop losses just above that candlestick, and uh, usually you can add after the candlestick has been broken. So the first entry should be somewhere in between 38.2 and 61.8 FIB, and add on or scaling should be after the break of that big First, I'm talking about first big bearish candlestick. Not about second, because the second is already a start of two or three black rows or some other continuation pattern. But always trade the first, very first candlestick or called Marubozu candlestick. That's a system by itself. We will show you that. Exactly. Pu uh, Pinder, it really depends what type of trader you are what you're looking for, how much time you have to trade. Uh, you know, Tarantula, he, he likes uh, intraday trading. Uh, I like intraday with a bit of swing in it as well sometimes within the week. Um, then you, again, if you have less time, the long-term trading uh, could suit your own lifestyle and maybe own schedule better. So it also depends on a lot of factors that we're not aware of. So that, that really depends. Exactly. So, let's see. I think that that's about it regarding the questions there. Great. Awesome questions. Thank you so much for that. Great participation. So, make sure to uh, take a look at Animal Markets uh, on Facebook and especially Twitter as well. You can uh, follow all the updates. Definitely worth it. Don't forget to take a look at the uh, the spreads, and uh, I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. Um, let's see who some has one more question. I'm not sure what you mean with that, who some. Ah, uh, that no, yeah, we're running a bit of out of time, unfortunately. Uh, 
but maybe next time we can do that. All right, so once again here, take a look at www.admiralmarkets.com slash forex slash Admiral Pro Trading Account, for example, or look at the great uh, contest with forexmod.com. All righty. Yeah, guys, and always try to follow us on Facebook. And uh, yet again, try to memorize this webinar. Try to look, uh, look at it again after it has been uploaded. Uh, on the website uh, because after this webinar in one of our next webinars we will all wrap it up and show you how to trade naked. So first of all you need to know about FIB retracement, you already know that, you know how to trade FIBs, now you know about uh, bearish and bullish candlesticks, Marubozu candlesticks and we will all wrap it up into a trading naked webinar. Exactly, that will be very interesting just like the next one on scalping. So make sure next week Thursday to check that out. Definitely. Yeah. Alrighty folks, that wraps it up. I thank you so much for being here and uh, wish you good trading and look forward to next time. Yeah, looking forward to it. Bye bye and cheers. Many great cheers, cheers to you all. Cheers. Cheers. The organizer.